How do you determine what's too much of a difference for you to be friendly or friends with somebody versus not? So, so personally, like I, I'll talk to anybody unless they're personally attacking me with like just baloney, you know, like 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 if the first thing I, I hear out of somebody's mouth is a personal attack against me because they disagree with me, then, then that that's the line. But like, if you believe something that I totally am against, I'll sit down and, and have a drink and, and listen to what you have to say and push back. So I, I, living in Florida and, and maybe Miami is a little bit different than the West Coast of Florida, but I think our county is like 67% Republican. And most most of my friends, a good number of my friends are, are Republican and we joke around, you know, like they they voted for Trump and they, they know what I do on Twitter. And I mean, we're still friends, you know, and, and I, I think that I think a lot, a lot of people in America, I think that they're starting to draw lines uh, in areas that they shouldn't, and 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 ending friendships, even like relatives, you know, like like I've had I've had people related to me that won't communicate with me or my wife because I don't like Trump, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's just pathetic, uh, so. I think that we're so much more divided now, obviously, than we were five, six, seven years ago. Uh, and people need to kind of separate politics out of out of their personal relationships. Yeah, I, I think it would be pretty hard for me to say, oh, I'm not gonna talk to this person. I can't be friends with this, this person. You, had, you have to have either done something really bad or said something really terrible directly to a person or, you know, behind their back. I don't I don't think I don't think just having a difference of opinion on politics or, you know, you know, gender ideology or immigration, I don't think that's enough to make me say, oh, I don't want to be friends with that person. I mean, because most likely there's a reason they feel that way. And I want to know, I want to know what that reason is. Okay. I just realized I asked you a very uh, content streamer brain question. <laughs> I think I agree with you 100% for personal acquaintances. Um, I guess from my perspective, it's interesting for me because a lot of the people I deal with are like also online. like come out of my stream. Yeah, so like content creators or other people. So like if I know a guy personally who believes in a particular thing that I think is like abhorrent, I won't say abhorrent, but I think this is like bad for the country. I don't think this is a good thing. I don't think I would not be friends with that person. But sometimes I'm getting, I'm confused online. If there's a guy who he's polite, he's friendly, but diametrically opposed to me on issues that I think are crucial for the, you know, composition of the nation and, and our future. Yeah, I'm just curious. I say I'm curious, but I guess you guys aren't as friends with, you guys aren't like friendly with content creators online as much. So it's kind of a different yeah, like, relationship. I, yeah. I feel like, yeah, Twitter's a little bit different than that. You know, because you're not having these face-to-face -face things. There's Twitter spaces, but it's mm -hmm. just voice and- Yeah, well, it, I mean, I, I have frequent conversations with some Republicans on X though, like in my DM box, like we have friendly conversations. People I might debate and- Twitter space in X space rooms. How would you feel? So like, let's say you've got like a Republican and he's like a decently famous lawmaker or online content creator and he's pushing uh, the idea that like the election was stolen. Like, is that something to where like, that's your political opinion? I don't respect your political opinion, but I respect our differences, but we can still like be friendly on a personal level. W would you be yeah. able to put that aside or is there like no, a no, for anything like that? I, I think I could be friendly with them. I would definitely want to hear their logic and show let them hear the facts and like, give them the facts. If if they don't already know them, they should if they're a lawmaker. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I would interview somebody who's on the right. I would definitely do that if they're a, an election denier. Um, I, I think it's important to give them, like a lot of people say, oh, how dare you give this person a platform like Alex Jones? How dare you go on Alex Jones show? Or how dare you give this election denier a platform on CNN or MSNBC? I think it's important because that's the only way they're their logic can be challenged where people can see both sides rather than just hear them say one thing and you say another thing. I think the conversation is what kind of might be that light bulb moment for people who believe that the election was stolen. Yeah, and and I, I think that if you push people into an echo chamber, that's only going to cause more extremism. It's just these crazy ideas getting crazier and crazier as they bounce off each other. Mm -hmm. But if you actually have you sit down and talk to that person and other people are listening, then there's still probably gonna be extreme people that are fans of this person, but maybe a f you might bring them a little bit closer to the middle, a little bit away from that. Uh, whereas if you just say, no, I won't talk. I think a lot of people on the left, and we were talking about this, I think a lot of people on the left refuse to have conversations with people on the right or go on shows, like go on Tim Pool. And I talked to Tim about that. And Tim, Tim hates my political takes, but, but I, I think going on to those shows, it 
it number one, it tells those people that you're willing to listen. And number two, it allows them to hear the other side where they might not, the, the audience might not actually hear that other side in a normal situation. Are there any other political content creators or prolific tweeters or anything else you guys think do a good job at getting things right? Besides me, of course. Uh, like, I don't know. Like, I, I mean. Are there people that you watch consume their content regularly on YouTube or Twitter? I don't, or? I don't really watch too much content for, you know, political stuff. Like, I, I don't even, I barely even watch the mainstream media. Like, I, I, I don't really watch. I think that Chris Cuomo, I, I think I like his takes because I, I feel he's, he doesn't care anymore, you know? Like he's not he's not clung, he's not stuck on CNN. He can say what he wants. Mm -hmm. And he's with News Nation now. And and he, 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 not everything he says is things that people on CNN will agree with. And he even said something about he might vote for Trump or something like that, which I disagree with. I think that's stupid, but but he, I, I, I don't think he, I respect the fact that he, is his own self and he's not catering towards what he thinks is going to make him more money. And, and I, I, I think he's somebody that you should follow, at least listen to. One thing that this is a huge complaint that I have, it's, there's two parts to this. One is people are way too black and white. I think that's just like a human thing in general. People are very mm -hmm. black and white on things. And two, people absolutely cannot moderate their responses to anything. Like if you tell somebody that they said that, um, they don't think minimum wage is the best policy. And somebody who said, I wanna grind up and eat homeless people, the response to these is very similar online to where if you say like, I don't like minimum wage, you're horrible, you're evil, yeah. you hate people, you're fascist, you're blah, blah, blah. And like, the, if you grind up the humans, maybe you'll get an extra report or two. But whenever somebody sees something bad about somebody, they go extremely crazy about it. And yeah, and it's a very black and white view of things. Yeah. And one of the most infuriating things to me uh, is that, I think there are genuinely really cool things that America has done and has accomplished. And I used to be able to at least rely on the neocons for this, for the Bushes and everybody to like celebrate some big American businesses. Obviously the left historically will be a little bit more hostile towards them, but now everybody hates the big businesses. Yeah, and yeah. the two biggest examples I can think of this are, one for Elon Musk, I severely dislike Elon Musk. I'm trying not to say hate, okay? <laughs> His political opinions are wild. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the, in my opinion, the mismanagement of X, just because Twitter was such a great branding, drives me crazy, that platform drives me crazy. Just, God, he does me crazy. But undeniably, SpaceX is awesome, okay? Yeah. We had no real private rockets in the United States, not no, like very little of any progress being made on the front. And now we have rockets that come back to earth. Yeah. That's super cool. And the electric cars, for as much as you wanna say other people are working on them, he pushed that industry forward like 10 or 20 years. Yeah, sure. Nobody was seriously, invest so, but if you're on the left, you can't give Elon Musk credit for that because right. he's like an evil guy. And then the flip side for Republicans, I think it is super cool that through the power of globalism, diversity and capitalism, and then through government action of warp speed, we created an amazing vaccine in record time using collaboration from companies and countries across With the Trump world. Trump as president. Because, yes, partially because Donald Trump pushed his heart. But conservatives will never give anybody credit for that because they hate the vaccine. And it sucks that even on the few things that we should all be able to agree, like these are cool things that America does together. And even if we hate each other, at least we like get shit done sometimes. It's cool. Yeah. Like though every single accomplishment has become a victim uh, of like political hostageness to yeah, where- So and, true. Yeah. God, that drives me insane. Um, especially related, yeah, to, to to both of those things. Yeah, there's no middle ground. You know, like like nobody can be, nobody can say this is good, and then the person that disagrees with them, other things can't say this is good. So like like, I feel we need to definitely get back to that, and we had it. I mean, even under Obama, we had it, even though the conservatives hated him. But I mean, there are still things that we could find common ground ground with. Mm -hmm.